Great morning, Christian friends. How are you all this morning? Good? Good, happy, nice, nice, nice. Awesome. Awesome. Tell the person next to you, it's good to see you today. It's good to see you today. Amen. And every day should be a good day and gets better and better as time goes by. Let's begin our morning experience, worship experience this morning as we follow on, as we settle ourselves first. And your burden is light. Okay, so we're going to start again. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. I break free from the cares of yesterday and will not take on any worries about tomorrow. For you have given me grace that salvation shall be completed. Your mercies are new every morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are able to stand, let's stand for opening him. him. Father, we, we just came here this morning, not of any goodness of our own, O oh God, 
but because of who you are. You, O oh God, continue to look after us, protecting us and guiding us. And you, O oh God, continue to show yourself strong and real in our lives. So, Father, as we continue in this act of worship, we sing prayerfully, Beautiful Lord, Wonderful Savior. Beautiful, wonderful Savior, Lord, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hands, crafted into your purpose. God tend to lean on our own understanding of God and 
We don't acknowledge you in all our ways. We ask your forgiveness, O oh God. So, Almighty God, and Heavenly Father, we have sinned, O oh God, against you and against each other in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By the evil that we do, O oh God, and the good that we do not do, for our own deliberate fault, O oh God. Father, we are sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. We ask you that you forgive us all that is past. We grant that we may serve you, O God, in the newness of life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. And God, we give you thanks, O God, for the love that you continue to bestow upon us. We thank you, O God, for morning by morning, O God, new mercies we see, and all that we need, your hands continue to provide. For you have been faithful, O God. You have been just, O God. Even when we've been unfaithful and we've been unjust to each other, you continue, O God, to protect us, to provide for us, to give us a path, O God, that continues to lead to you, who is the author and finisher of all faith. So we thank you, O oh God, for your love, for your covering, O oh God, for your protection. And we don't take it for granted, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, and we look forward, O oh God, to the things to, for the things to come and the blessings on its way. To the honor and glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Our oh, assurance of pardon. The Lord is merciful and full of compassion. Hear and receive the word of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. 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 We go into a period of praise and worship. Yeah, we go to the back. <laughs> All right. So then we'll do um, two hymns, yeah, and uh, one chorus this morning. We're gonna start with "Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior." So if you're able to stand, let's stand. Raise our voices, clap, do what you need to do. But worship is a um, praise and worship is where you release it all to God. So just give it, give it all, all of it.
God's written word. Our Old Testament as it comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, reading verses 1 through to 5. So 7, sorry. And before that, we will read the collect as we come up on the screen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us read the collect together. Let your fears shine, that we may be saved. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Paul, we read of the epistle, Hebrews 11, verses 29 through to this, to chapter 12, up to this. Good morning, Christian friends. Here at the NIT, the Christian lesson. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fall, would fail me to tell of the Gideon, the Barah, Simon, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, as administered justice, obtained promises, shut, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in weight, put foreign armies to fight. Women are uh, Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were, they were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, at whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended further for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not apart from us. Apart from us, we made perfect. Twelve, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings to closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfect of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God. God only did bring us the church's news and concerns, after which the offering for the work of the Lord shall be received. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. I greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So, what I would like to say, welcome to everyone present with us this morning. Is there any visitors among us this morning? I see a lady at the back there. You could you? Welcome, all right, and 
trust that you will enjoy your fellowship this morning. To our members and well wishers, we want to say good to have you all in the house. Simeon, good to see you this morning. We should bring with us. I haven't seen you for a while, but I know that you are going okay. You are doing okay. I'm glad to see you. To our preacher for this morning, Brother Andre Kalev. You know, Andre is one of our own. So if Andre hit you and you feel you get it under the belt, you just have to say, oh gosh, and take it. Yeah? Because Andre always has something, you know, to tickle us and to leave. When we leave this place, when Andre preach, he leaves us, you know, thinking, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to walk in the, you know, the, the walk of faith? You know, he always keeps us on our toes. And so, but Andre, whatever message you are bringing for us this morning, I'm certain that you leave us better off than when we entered into the chapter this morning. Before, before I move on to the sister, Sister Mead, could you do me the honor to be sister? Uh, our Lord was found sheep this morning. Um, could, you, could you give her that so that she would she would remember that this is San Fernando Methodist Church? And she would she wouldn't be, she wouldn't wonder anymore. She would she would just uh, Okay, Sister Esther. <laughs> right, so you, so you remember San Fernando, right? You remember San Fernando as your. <laughs> okay, my dear. It's all, it's all, it's all in, 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 good, in good fun and, and faith and trust in God. So thanks and appreciation to those who clean the sanctuary for worship, the ushers, your the audiovisual team, the musicians. And to all who give up their time and talent. And to our Sunday school teachers. And all who contribute to the upkeep of the church. I say thank you because we all know that the Sunday school is back up and running. And, um, I hope that everything is okay with them this morning. There is a little mishap where, where the Sunday school is being held downstairs in the, the office. Um, some, uh, uh, a line boost that we pump and flood it out the downstairs. So, so they have to do some reorganizing this morning. But we do all, all things are possible because that we'll get it sorted out so that VBS tomorrow can proceed without any interruptions. Now, press, let us continue to pray for free and lift up our connectional bishop, Reverend Galbraith, our district bishop, Reverend Derek Richards, our superintendent, minister. Reverend Kurt Baker, our city minister, Reverend Julian Murray, and Reverend Nicholas Chambers, our very own, who has left our shores to go on to his new assignment. And we pray also for our sick and shutting, our youth, our young adults, our children, members of our families, and members of our congregation. And let us not forget the blessings of our circuit as we press on the plans for improvement to the manses and the proposed car park. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Good days and anniversary. Is there anyone celebrating a good day and anniversary today or this coming week? Okay, there's no one in the chapel. I'm sure there's someone somewhere out there. YouTube, social media, whatever we celebrate, so we wish them a happy birthday, a very healthy, faithful, and trusting one. And God bless them for this coming year. And those who are celebrating an anniversary, may they have a continue to have long life together, and that they will continue to love and trust the Lord. I now move on to the notices for today and for the week. Weekly prayer meeting held on Tuesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The Bible study continues on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. The topic, how to identify a demand. It's a kind of thing, eh? Okay. It is 
We are living in that time today. Guess how we are angels of God. We are also demons who are in the streets. And those who won by the study last week, we know that it was so interesting. Like they didn't want by the study to close up. We are not going to get a, a window to close up by the study last week. But that is the road going down. But, um, as I said, the, script, the, the topic is how to identify a demon and the scripture verse is taken from Mark 5, 1 to 19. So even if you're not a uh, Bible study, you could take a note of the Bible and the scripture passage taken from Mark 5, reading from verses 1 to 19. And again, this is via Zoom. You all know reading by now. St. Fernando Methodist. Churches, the location by the school begins on Monday the 15th, which is tomorrow and continues through to the 19th. And the time is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's being held right here in the chapel. Because the last information I had was that they had, I think, sent out things to over 60 children. So we should have a pretty good. Right. I know everyone would not have responded, but. I think we should have a very good PBS beginning tomorrow. Uh, on the circuit, to discuss, and this is especially to the young people with us this morning, the circuit meeting to discuss in month will be held on Saturday the 20th of August, that's next Saturday, at 10 a.m. via Zoom. So, if you are going to have a link, uh, to go for that link so that you all will discuss youth month. I was seeing, I know that this time of the year, you all would normally be at Victory um, Heights, camping. Correct, Andre? Correct. Yeah. Simeon? Or this time you all in camp, I'll be young people in camp. Because of COVID, I know nothing couldn't be put into you, some, you know? But we'll get back to, the, to where we once were, and we will, you know, make sure that the young people walk the walk. He did not do a service. It's guided for Sunday the 28th of August and beginning at 6 p.m. And this service will be held at the St. Margaret Methodist Church. So keep note of that. The 28th, Sunday the 28th, our healing and deliverance service. And it begins at 6 p.m. at St. Margaret. Circuit prayer and fasting is also observed on the 28th of August 2020. A reminder to submit our calendar of events for the upcoming church year 2022 to 2023. So at the church we have a we have a responsibility to, to submit our calendar of events for the ensuing year, which begins on the first of September. And the man's repair fund with a pledge of two thousand dollars to be submitted to the church office. This can be done on a monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or on a one-off payment. And your contribution will go a long way in restoration that should be in our hands in the South Indian City. You know that there is a plan to refurbish the manses at Labra and at Pleasant Park, and that is in progress. And also there is a plan to rebuild, demolish and rebuild the manses at Green Acres for the superintendent minister. So um, contributions would be gladly accepted and we are going forward and, and, and one of the major things that we are planning is a multi-story car park at a cross here that will bring some much needed earnings into the, the purpose of the church that could help us pay all our bills and so on. So these are plans and, and we have to talk about it, we have to let the members know what the plans are and we have to continue to pursue whatever contribution as we said we have the man to care um, pledge that has been out here for quite a while now so we do the members to, to, to submit their, their, their pledges and also we are seeking whatever assistance we can so that we can move forward with these projects. I was reminded to inform the, the, the congregation that we are still in COVID, uh, so we need to be wearing our masks in the chapel. This 
from from the superintendent minister. This is my brother right could see this. This is the instruction coming directly from the superintendent minister. And finally, the San Fernando Methodist Church is hosting a fundraiser on Saturday, the twenty seventh of August. Right, it's a snack box fundraiser. We begin at 11 a.m. to around 2 p.m. because our ticket is $50. The venue will be right here in the church compound where one can pick it up. It will be items, the items consist of, excuse me, red velvet top cake with cream cheese frosting, of course, very sand and stables, e food, and so on and so on, and a drink will be included in the course. So we look forward to the support. So far, ticket sales have been going pretty good. We still have some tickets. Anyone who <coughs> needs a ticket before they leave, you can come and see me, all right? So that I can give you a ticket or two so that you can have for yourself. You want to take one for some other member, the family or friend, feel free. And this is what it looks like. We are on the notice board. I think it's up there on the screen. Right, so you can see me and after church where you can get your tickets. These are all the notices I have for today and for the next day. Thank you. We now have our time and our friend.
I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be to be baptized, and what I and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately see it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see this, the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated and let us pray. Father, you have given us a God your written word. And we thank you thus far for the time that we've had in, in your sanctuary this morning. But Father, as we're about to interpret what you have to say to us, O oh God, make our hearts pliable in your hands this morning. Father, help us to be open, our hearts to be open, our minds to be open, to receive from you this day, O oh God, our daily bread, that we may feed on you, O oh God, who is the bread of life. I pray, O oh God, that I will decrease, O oh God, and fade into the background while your Holy Spirit come forth and speak to your people, O oh God, in ways only you know how. So, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, O oh God, that it be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our salvation. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So good morning once again, San Fernando. Oh gosh, I'm tired and sleep, boy. Wow, <laughs> I didn't like the dragon, dragon. I didn't have a hard week. Yes, hard week. Yeah, busy. You accomplished everything you set out to accomplish this week. Some, <laughs> mm, kinda, kinda. So, um. There are times in life, and we will, we will all know this, that we don't always get what we want. Yes? yes. Correct. Right? Um, even this morning, our passage alludes to something that um, is a bit challenging for us, because um, I'm going to share with you what God would have placed on my heart with respect to the gospel lesson this morning. How many of us, um, when we have something to do, you know you have to do this thing. But you don't want to do it. But you know you have to. You have to do it. But you really and truly prefer not to do it. How many of us ever had that kind of experience? Yeah? You know, yeah, it has to be done. Especially when it comes to helping somebody. Right? Be it your children or whatever. You have to help them. You really don't want to do it because it's kind of the tough love kind of thing. You know, but you know you have to do it. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, boy. So, so this morning, it's kind of like that. Right? Because God would have placed on my heart um, that I came to bring, what? Division. I come to bring peace on earth. I came to bring what? Division. Conflict in the home. But actually, when I came in this morning, and we were coming out of the vestry, God showed me once again. Now this morning he showed me a vision of um, the children of Israel leaving Egypt. And usually that journey would have taken them 11 days. It took them 40 years to do that. Right? However, when I reached here to San Fernando, he said, the promised land, and I don't know who this is for, but the promise has no place for complainers. The promised land has no place for complainers. Alright, so 
to whomsoever that was for, I delivered the message. You and God sort that out. Right? Um, but this morning, I want to talk about mindset. Because God wants us to go to another level of being in Him. But He's saying to us this morning, San Fernando, that the mindset that we have right now is not sufficient to take us to that another level. We need to grow our mindset. Tell somebody next to you, you need to grow your mindset. Now, what do I mean? <laughs> the way we've been getting results before is not going to be sufficient to take us to that next level that God needs you to be. So therefore, we need to change our perspectives. But he's also saying to us this morning that there are things that are blocking you from receiving the full blessing that I have in store for you. I'm going to share with you two videos. All right? Two videos, one at a time. Right? And to whomsoever this belongs, please receive it with what God has in store for you. Can we play the first one? As we grow... Hold on, one sec. Yeah, that's it. Right? So one sec. As we grow, what tends to happen is that there are certain things that hold us back. Agreed or not? Or not, or not agreed? There are certain things that hold us back, yes? And God designed you to soar like an eagle. Everybody, anybody agree with me with that? You were designed to soar. Tell somebody next to you, you were designed to soar. But we often find ourselves scratching with chickens. Why is that? We were designed to soar. But yet we find ourselves scratching with the chickens. Why is that? Because here what tends to happen? A chicken has wings just like an eagle. A chicken can fly too, not so? But how high could it go? Not high at all. How far could it go? Not far at all. You know why that is? When a chicken eats and it excretes what it eats, it goes back and eats what it just excretes. So God is saying to us, the thing that we're supposed to be releasing, we often go back to pick it up. So that's why you can't reach the heights that you need to go. Because we're holding on to past hurts, past pains, past failures. And instead of being able to move forward, we always run it back to pick the crap that we just let out. Am I making sense to anybody here this morning? Yes. So... Well, all in one talk straight, right? Eh? <laughs> so let's look at this video.
friends. How many of us ever saw this movie? All right, it's, from, it's called the Shack, right? The Spanish-looking guy, he was representative of Jesus in this, in this um, clip. And how many of us, like Mark here, yeah, allow our past, allow the hurts of yesterday to still control our, our future and even our present today? The thing is, God wants us to release ourselves from the fears. Because you know what fear is, right? It's false evidence that appears real. Some of us, instead of facing everything and rising, we face it and run. We need to consult our faith and not our fear. Tell somebody next to you, consult your faith and not your fear. Come, come now, man. Speak up a little bit louder. Consult your faith and not your fear. Consult your faith and not your fear. Because the thing is that in order to move forward, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. If you're only looking to, to get the approval of what you see before you take a move, that makes no sense. That's not faith. Courage is what is going to be required to take you to that next level of being. When, when before Jesus started to walk on water, I'm using this clip here, right? Before he started to come to man, his mind was bombarded by things that went on in the past. How many of us are trapped by the things that went on in our past? That we are unable to push forward. That we are unable to actually make decisions based on our faith rather than our fear. That God needs to use us at another level, but He can't. Because we are, have imprisoned ourselves in our fear. We have imprisoned ourselves to not receive from Him the blessings that you deserve. Or maybe you don't. Do you believe that you deserve the blessing from God? But do you think He will give it to you if you don't push past the fears that hold you down? In the scripture in Revelation, it says that to Him that overcome, are you overcoming the things that you fear? Or have you we become comfortable in an uncomfortable situation? What is your situation like today? The things that holds us back is the way that we think. Because here, yeah, whatever you think about, you are going to bring about. Whatever you focus on, it expands. So therefore, God is saying to us this morning, Christian friends, in order to get a different result, you need to think differently. You change, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Let me repeat that. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So yes, the hurts will come. But change your perspective. Will people continue to do you wrong? Yes. But change your perspective. You need to respond differently to the things that come at you. Am I making any sense here this morning? We need to let go of whatever went on in the past. Was it difficult? Yes. But hear what? God will always be with you. You have to go through your trials. You have to not just go, but also grow through your trials. And hear what? Last time I came here, we spoke of moving your spiritual life from the infancy stage to adult. And growing is never easy. There will be pain in growing. It will not change. The pain will be there. The thing is, how am I going to move on? Even in the midst of that pain. Another thing that God says that is keeping us back is unforgiveness. Let's run the next one. He killed my dog. I want to hurt him. I want him to hurt. Luckily, he hurt me. I want you. 
Kill her. I'll get this no open tomorrow. But he too is my son. And I want to redeem him. Redeem him? He should burn in hell. So we're back to you as the judge. So you, you just let him get away with it. Nobody gets away with anything. Everything bears consequences. What he did was horrible. I'm not asking you to excuse what he did. I'm asking you to trust me to do what's right and to know what's best. And then what? Forgiveness doesn't establish your relationship. It's just about letting go of each other. Mac, the pain inside is devouring you, robbing you of joy, crippling your capacity to love. You're not stuck because you can't. You're stuck because you won't. sometimes but I want you all to notice something something Simeon identified to me in the car coming over the bug in his hand re representative of the pain he carried it's so small he tried to squeeze it and he couldn't kill it the pain was so small the things that we hold on to are so small that if we just let it go we can release ourselves to another level of being, another level of happiness, if we were just let it go. Tell somebody, just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. And it's so liberating to know that if you could just let it go. Now, a few years ago, I could attest to that. I forgive you. I forgive you. That was a hard thing to say. Oh, yeah, somebody understand what I'm saying? It was difficult. But the more you say it, if I um, was to continue and show you the other clip for here, it's I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. He had to keep saying it over and over and over and over again. Because here what? Are you going to allow these little things in your life to stop you from receiving the big things of God? These little things, so insignificant, you can't even squeeze it between your fingers. To stop you from receiving a blessing that will give you a life that you know, that you want, that you're looking forward to. That your hoping will come. Because God will have placed his purpose in you. 
and he's waiting to bring that purpose to fruition if we would have let go of our fears and unforgiveness. God is calling us now to hack our thinking. Let's turn, um, could you bring up scripture? Philippians 4 verse 8. What happens to us when, when things go wrong? And they will. When we're unhappy, how do we therefore have our thinking change the result that we've been getting? Philippians 4 and verse 8, it says to do something. Who found it? Who found it? Philippians 4 and verse 8, it says to. We look in, we look in, we look in. We're looking, we're looking. <laughs> Think, right? Think on these things. Think on these things. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is pleasing and commendable. Think on these things. Why he wants us to think on these things. Whatever you think about, guys, you are going to bring about. So stop looking at your situation, the negatives that is going on in your life, and you won't think it, oh gosh, I will figure it. Stop thinking on them. Because what you think about, you're going to just expand it more. It makes it worse. Remember when he was in the boat, and he keeps looking at the problems around him. The storms will always be raging around you. But guess what? It will never touch you. Unless you allow it to. What did the guy who was representing Jesus say? He says to do what? Focus on me. Focus on the result that you're looking for. Focus on the thing that you want that you don't have as yet. Focus on the thing that you want that you don't have. Not the thing that you don't want that you do have. Am I making sense to anybody here this morning? The thing that you want, focus on that. Because if you think on the thing that you don't want, that you do have, you're going to get more of it. So think on these things. Whatsoever things are true, pure thinking, positive thinking. Think on the things that is going to bring you the results that you're looking for. Because hear what? As the guy said in the video, you can't even do this on your own. So please, stop trying to be an island. Tell somebody next to you, stop trying to be an island. Hmm. God is calling us to move to another level. And if we want to go to that next level, we need to change our thinking. Positive thinking produces positive results. Let me say that again. Positive thinking produces positive results. And I'm sure everybody here likes positive results. So therefore, stop thinking on the things that you do have that you don't want. And think positive to the things that you don't have that you do want. Making sense to everybody this morning. Right, good. So let's go on to the next part. He says that I came on earth to bring division. Now, why would gentle Jesus make a man bring division on earth? I want to set son against father, father against son, daughter against mother, and yada yada. Why would he say that? I didn't come to, to bring peace. The reason we will have these divisions, brothers and sisters, is because of the, the um, I heard a new term yesterday, that, you know, all the time we had IQ, the intelligent quotient, and then it came to EQ. Now we go into a new way of thinking. It's called GQ. It's called generational quotient. Because right now, we have the baby boomers, the millennials, and the Gen Xers working in the same workplace. But the thing is, the baby boomers are retiring. The, mo the millennials and Gen Xers, they're not interested in staying in no organization for years. 
So how do we therefore work together to get things done? That's the thinking of the new of the generation that we are a part of now. The thing is, we need to change our mindset in order to survive in the society that we are going into now. If we keep the same traditional way of thinking and doing, we are going to have the same result. If you want a better result, we need to change the way we think. Change the way we think about things. Think, change the way we think about doing things. And therefore, the result that we're looking for, we will get it. Am I making sense to anybody here this morning? And I don't know who this is for, but God is saying to us this morning that I need my purpose to be birthed in this church. Don't allow mediocre thinking to take control of your life. Don't allow mediocre thinking. I don't know where we get this from. It seems like everybody has this victim mentality and it's praised. Nobody likes the victim mentality. We were made victors, winners in our own rights. How many winners do we have here this morning? Anybody? Could, could I see that raise of any winners in the congregation? Alright? Continue to win. There's victory in your DNA. The only reason you wouldn't win is if you decide not to. Let me say that again. The only reason you will not win is if you decide not to win. Let us pray. Father, God and Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your word, O oh God, is life and it's light. And Father, I thank you, O oh God, and I pray that your word will stir in the hearts of your people. That we, O oh God, will change our thinking and elevate our thinking to what you need it to be. That we, O oh God, will learn to lean on you who is the author and finisher of our faith. You, O oh God, who will give us the direction that we need to be the person that you designed us to be. I pray that we will let go, O oh God, of the fear, of the unforgiveness, of the failures of our past, O oh God, and that we can hold fast to a future that is bright and victorious. I pray, O oh God, that we will think on these things, that whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is true, whatsoever, oh God, is of a good report, that we will think on these things and have the result that you have in store for us. So, Father, I pray for each person, O oh God, whose head is bowed in your sanctuary this morning, and those who may be on the virtual platform as well, that they will come to a deeper relationship with you and a deeper understanding of who they are and who, whose they are. And I pray, O oh God, that your will be done in and through the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. I pray for the leaders of this congregation, O oh God, that they may serve you, O oh God, with wisdom, that they may serve you with honesty and with compassion, O oh God, that your perfect will be done in this church community, and that as each person, O oh God, hold fast to their purpose in you, that we see, O oh God, another revival coming in this church, because your Holy Spirit, O oh God, will be welcomed and open to do, O oh God, what only you can do. So, Father in God, we re we open ourselves and we release, O oh God, all the hurts, all the pains, all the failures, O oh God. We say, O oh God, that you will be the author, that you will be the finisher of our faith. And let thy will be done in and through the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven.
as he sing or the parking him. Anyway, whosoever will may come.